مرحبا انا هلا دي مايو رح رفقكم كل اسبوع مع موده 100 وفريق موده 100 من لندن نتعرف على فاشن ديزاينرز واكسسري ديزاينرز محطتنا اليوم مع بروس اولفيلد بروس اولفيلد هو من اكبر الديزاينرز ببريطانيا هو انشهر كثير بال 1980s وال 1990s يلي سم لما نسمم لبرنس ديانا ورفقها لاكثر من 10 سنين ولبست له كثير تيب له ريدي تو وير وكوتير نحن اليوم رح نتعرف عليه ببيشن بليس بنايس بريدج بالبوتيك تبعيته مطرح ما هو بصمم البرايد الوير ما رح اخركم كثير تعال نفوت سوا نتعرف على بروس اولفيلد ونحكي معه شوي عن تصاميمه وعن حياته كديزاينر وكفنان تفضلوا معي Hello, Modemir. I'm Bruce Oldfield. First of all, I'd like to talk to you about your career. You've been designing uh, clothes for nearly 40 years now. And I'd like you to take us back to uh, the beginning of your career and what was your biggest break. Well, I suppose the biggest break at the beginning of my career was actually going to St. Martin's and getting out of the school that I was in, which was Ravensbourne, and um, being accepted at St. Martin's and being able to leave there within a year, showing in the second year, in the third year show. I was a second year and they let me show in the third year show because I'd been offered a job by a store in New York called Henry Bendel. Um, and it was as I'd done teacher training already, it was, uh, yeah, please let me, let's get out of here. You know, I've got a off, good job offer. Lots of press, lots of publicity. So off I went, you know, it was great. So that was my first big break, really, in 1970, that was 1973. Sometimes designers start with doing, you know, couture and maybe they go into ready to wear. How does the how yeah. did you come about to start your couture? The reason why I started then doing couture was that I got a bit bored with being being told every season they would say, um, oh, um, well, where are the jerseys? Because I started off by, do by doing jersey and it looked like, in that was in 1973, by 1978, it looked like that's all I could do and that's all that they expected of me, jersey dresses. I started just doing different things, you know, and using different fabrics, taffetas, organzas, silk fi, duchess satins, and they were getting grander and grander and grander. And the, but the, the stores weren't buying this stuff, they were still wanting to buy the jersey. But the press were using the more grand things. And so suddenly I was getting all of these people coming and saying, you know, well, where can I buy that? And they said, well, here, really, we'll make it for you, you know, and that's how it started. Your association with the Diana Princess of Wales. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, it's obvious to the whole world that in the 80s, I think throughout the 80s, uh, maybe I, I believe you were one of her favorite, maybe, designers. Oh, I think and so. uh, she wore a lot of your clothes, uh, be it the ready to wear one or the couture. Well, it was a bit of a pressure, but we, you know, we we developed alongside of Diana, you know, when she first came to me in 1980, just before she got married, she didn't know what she wanted, we didn't really know what was expected of us, so we kind of learned together. So we had a long, a long time of, of you know, getting to know each other and getting to know the reaction that people you know, made to, you know, anything being too short, too low, you know, too low in the back. You, you know what I mean? There was a lot of restrictions with the Princess of Wales. It's, it's, it's always difficult dressing people who, who are in the public eye because, you know, you, everybody's got a, their own idea of how a pretty princess should be dressed and um, um, some people are looking for those pretty princesses to, to come out of the mould and do something different when it's never going to happen. Yeah. Well, the short hair one I find is the, the, the one with the long fur. There were a lot of speculation just before her wedding last year to Prince William. You know, they had some photos taken of her mom coming oh, to yeah. the shop and her sister. And everybody was trying to guess, you know, who's going to be designing the dress. Yeah. Um, as a designer, do you like pitch ideas to her, whatever PR team? Or well, do, they, do you wait for, to get that phone call? You wait for the phone call, which quite clearly never came. Um, but, <laughs> um, but in that instance, it was very good. It was very good for me. I, mean, I have to say that the, the the speculation went on and on and on, and we did nothing to um, to assuage it. I mean, it was it was perfect for us, um, and we followed the rules that we were taught in back in the 80s, which was never deny and never elaborate. 
Now it's a different story when you're getting uh, celebrities to yeah. wear your clothes on the red carpet. Then yeah. in that sense, maybe you would have to not necessarily pitch, but maybe send the clothes for their stylists. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the collection is, I mean, the evening wear collection is actually at this moment in Los Angeles. Um, and we, we got Kim Kardashian wearing a dress at the, at the um, Golden Globes after parties. She wasn't actually at the Golden, you know, she wasn't in the, in the ceremony. Um, which has been fantastic. Uh, and, and it's also created sales, which is unusual for those things, you know. I'm going to take you away now from something, talk about something completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, according to my um, researchers, you've done some, uh, you've designed a uniform for oh, McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. Back in, was it 2008? Uh, it was about then, yeah. How did this story come about, this uh, collaboration, and how difficult well, was it for <coughs> you to come down from your... Lofty um, heights. Yes, down <laughs> to doing something for a fast food uh, well, chain. I work, I'm a consultant for a, 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 unif a company that produces uniforms, that's how it all happened, you know, and so they... It was all engineered that way, and, and McDonald's wanted a, a designer and they liked the connection, and and I didn't mind the connection. And as I said, they paid very nicely, and um, and it was a nice thing to do. I, I mean, I'm 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 of the people. I know where I come from. You know what I mean? I'm not um, I'm not a duke or a prince. And, and I have worked in hospital kitchens, and I have worked in in you know in my in my youth. You know, we just love your design, especially in the Middle East. When you look at the design, the tailoring, the details, which Arab women really love. Yeah. When you design, do you have a certain type of woman in mind, or you just design for all women? I mean, when I design, I, I mean, I, I suppose that I do have a sort of a, probably more of a princessy type of woman in mind than a, than a, than a scallywag, you know. I mean, I think that I'm, I'm thinking more, um, um, you know, refined, Grace Kelly type, Audrey Hepburn type. Does the fabric come first, or the design in your head? I think that norm, usually I would have decided on a, on, a, on a silhouette or a technique or a shape that I want to do and then I'll make the fabric, choose the fabric that goes with it. But then occasionally you come across the fabric and, and that dictates, you know, because for the certain types of material will only make certain types of dresses, you know. But I tend to work a lot from technique, you know, sort of whether it's pleating or smocking or shearing or whatever it might be. Um, and I design from that, so in a, in a way, you know, I'm taking the fabric and I'm doing something different with the, the actual fabric. This is why I rarely use prints or I rarely use patterned fabrics. So you, you like to decide maybe a year ahead on the fabrics that you'd like to work with, or is it um, every few months you just you know, do a trip to go somewhere? Italian and French, I suppose, but probably mostly Italian, in fact. You get some very good embroideries in Switzerland, particularly in the sort of fine, in the, the very good laces, the embroidered laces. There's a lot of that around this season. But I do a lot of embroidery, and I do a lot of that in India. I've got fantastic people in Bombay who I go and visit every now and again. Do you think an outfit can change people's perception of the person? I think when an outfit changes people's perception, then the outfit is probably over the top. You know, it's usually a mistake or a, you know, a, a, a problem like, you know, buttons come undone or, you know, the hem falls down. I think your clothes, you know, the things that you wear should enhance you, it shouldn't take over from you. And I've always been of that opinion. Um, they should be, they should make the moment, you know, with you, not, it's not like fighting against you. you know. Uh, I've seen here you've got some jewellery and accessories. Is it something that you do in association with somebody or collaborating with somebody or it's purely yours? Well, the most pride? of it, most of it, I mean, the things that are fabric are ours and the things that are metal are usually, there's, there's a, a couple of designers that we use that, that do, and there's also some uh, vintage things there. There's some, some very long pearl earrings um, which are, a designer called Miriam Haskell uh, from the 40s. Because I used to collect a lot of vintage jewellery, but most of it's gone now, and, and you can't find the really good stuff anymore. It's like it's like everything. What about the golden rule of how to style oneself, a woman? How, how would you, what you would advise Modamia uh, as viewer to, well, the first how to thing... stay stylish and one step ahead maybe of... Uh... 
But I think I think it's important not to try too hard. You know, I think it's you know not to make not to buy things that that suddenly you know you that look that are not your style. To look at your figure, you know, and to be aware of your figure. I think yeah, just be aware, just be aware of yourself, and not and not not be too prey to fashion, because fashion is good. Because fashion is you know it it moves it moves everything on. It's but it's it's there as a guide, not as a um, as a must. A you know, uh, Mr. Alfred, I'd really like to thank you for uh, inviting us here to your uh, lovely bridal shop in Mysbridge. Uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you and to get to know you more. And we look forward to seeing more of your designs and of ho hopefully celebrities wearing your designs. Thank you. Thank you.